Hello and welcome to Doc Play's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at organic chemistry and importantly we're going to be looking at alkenes and the electrophilic addition reaction. And this is part one of a two-part lesson. So by the end of the session you should be able to do the following. You should be able to outline the mechanisms for electrophilic addition reactions to make haloalkanes, dihaloalkanes and alcohols and you should be able to recall the test for unsaturation. Let's take a look. So, looking at electrophilic addition, the first thing to consider is what is an electrophile. And an electrophile is something which is, accepts a lone pair of electrons. So, our electron pair acceptors. So, the opposite almost of the nucleophile an electron pair donor. They tend to be have a lack in electron density, so in the case that we'll be seeing, will tend to be delta positive, and want to react with things which are have got lots of electrons. And those things with lots of electrons are, of course, our alkenes. So the example electrophiles that we'll see in unit two or the AS level, the old unit two, are bromine although that seems a, an odd choice to start with because it doesn't obviously have a, a lone pair of electrons. Hydrogen bromide and also H2SO4 sulfuric acid. Which we're going to, have to see later in written a bit like this. Importantly, these have all got regions of delta positive and delta negative, so it's changing electron density. And the bromine, although there's no difference in electronegativity, has a, a, a dipole induced upon it when it comes near to regions of high electron density. So we're going to be looking at these three electrophiles for electrophilic addition. These are all examples of polar molecules and when you we come across in the A levels course next year we will also look at uh, positively charged ions things like NO2 plus and H plus and also the, the carbonyl cation, carbon cation, but for now we're just going to look at these polar molecules for electrophilic addition. So we'll look at our first example of the electrophilic addition mechanism and we'll look at the conditions of when we add bromine, the orange coloured halogen. Here we have an alkene and remember electrophiles, electron pair acceptors, so react with things with large number of electrons which occur in our carbon-carbon double bond. We'll see here that bromine is an electrophile, even though it's a neutral molecule, because the bromine is very polarizable. What that means is, overall, the ethene, that is a carbon-carbon double bond, induces a temporary dipole in the bromine molecule, resulting in the polarity between delta positive and delta negative. The induced dipole allows that uh, molecule to react. Remember our Coley arrow shows the movement of electrons and our movement of electrons this time is from the carbon double bond where the electrons are onto the bromine atom and then from the BRBR bond onto the bromine on the other side. What that means is we have an intermediate that is a carbocation intermediate to say that is not the final product but is formed during the reaction. That intermediate has a bromine on and there is a positive ion, carbocation because it's a cation and on the carbon. We then have a bromide ion left over. That bromide added ion then goes and reacts again from the lone pair of electrons onto the 
positive carbocation, a fully positive charge, and we end up with a dibromo alkane. So we end up with a dihalo alkane. This is also, at the same time, a test for unsaturation, i.e. for a double bond, because the bromine is orange or brown, and in reaction we end up with a dibromo alkane, which is colourless. So this allows us to have a test for unsaturation, where we have the haloalkane reacting with, uh, forming the dihaloalkane from the alkene and the bromine. So here we have an example of bromine, water and cyclohexene, shaking on the orange on the left hand side there to go to a colourless solution on the right hand side because of the electrophilic addition reaction. So in this second example, again we're looking at an electrophilic addition mechanism, we're going to, instead of bromine, we've got hydrogen bromide. We have a polarised molecule with the hydrogen being dosed positive and the bromine being dosed negative. And we have electron density again in the carbon-carbon double bond. And so the electrons flow from the carbon-carbon double bond onto the hydrogen. And then the bond breaks between the hydrogen and the bromine. We show with the curly arrow again onto the bromine. What that means this time is our carbocation intermediate has a hydrogen on it. And there is a positive charge a cation on the carbon, intermediate, and we have a bromide left over with a negative charge, and then we have the lone pair of electrons again, and the Br minus with a positive charge, and we end up this time instead of a dibromo, we have a bromo with a single halo out. This could easily be HCl, or potentially hydrogen fluoride, HF, or even HI. I just chose to use HBr in this example. We'll finally go on and look at H2SO4. This time we'll look at the conditions of H2SO4 then. And there's two ways of drawing this molecule, H2SO4. What it looks like is up here where you've got the, the sulfur in the centre, double bonded to two oxygens, and then two OH groups coming off. That's uh, certainly one way of drawing it. Uh, it sometimes gets a bit cumbersome in reaction mechanisms, so it tends to be simplified to just be HO, and then we just write the rest of the molecule as SO3H, and that's just to make our eyes a bit more simple. The mechanism, though, is exactly the same as we've seen previously. We have a polarised molecule between the hydrogen and the oxygen, the hydrogen being delta positive, and the rest of the molecule there being delta negative. We've got the electron density in the carbon-carbon double bond, and so we have electron movement from the double bond into the hydrogen, and then from the bond onto the OSO3H, leaving us again a carbocation intermediate with a hydrogen on one side, carbocation intermediate and a negatively charged with a lone pair of electrons the rest of the sulfuric acid molecule this then goes to bond and attacks a positive carbocation leaving us with a molecule that looks like This ends up being an intermediate step, in fact, because what we tend to do with this molecule is we then heat it with, we then warm with H2O. What we end up with is
an alcohol group. And so this becomes a way of making an alcohol group. Overall, what we have is ethene plus water. Because the H2SO4 initially undergoes electrophilic addition but is then reformed in the final step here at the end, the H2SO4 is actually acting as a catalyst. And this forms C2H5OH, which is ethanol. And we'll be looking in a bit more detail later on at how we can make this. We tend to actually use phosphoric acid in industry, but we can use it with uh, concentrated H2SO4 as well. Mm. That brings us to the end of the lesson. We'll have a quick recap and see where we're going next time. So in electrophilic edition part one, alkenes, you should now be able to outline the mechanisms for electrophilic addition reactions to make haloalkanes, dihaloalkanes and alcohols, and also recall the test for unsaturation. Okay, next time we'll look at uh, part two for electrophilic addition.